Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to TempleCast 2020. So, how about those fills? Sorry, a little waking dream there. Anyhow, here we are at episode 26 of this podcast. I'm Jim Gennati, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church, and I am probably like most of you, just a little stir-crazy lately. I've been taking walks, lots and lots of walks, and that helps. I also had a couple of in-person conversations lately. Don't worry, we were well over six feet apart. Having a conversation with someone who was actually standing in front of me felt a little weird. It was good, don't get me wrong, I really liked it, it's just that it had been so long I almost forgot how to do it. On the plus side, lockdown has done wonders for my prayer life and for my study of the scriptures. I hope something similar is happening for you. If you have any scriptures that have stood out to you in this time, let me know. Today we'll hear again from the book of Proverbs and also from the Gospel of John. Let's start with prayer. Lord our God, whose light shines out of the darkness to illuminate our hearts and lives, we thank you for all the goodness you show us. We want to see your goodness clearly and have confidence in it, no matter how much around us is dark and disquieting. Be in us by your Spirit so that we remain firm in our faith and never fail to walk in it by your light. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Happy are those who find wisdom, and those who get understanding. For her income is better than silver, and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who laid hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. And here is a prayer for this day from Enriching Our Worship 2. It is a publication of the Episcopal Church. Generous God, we give you thanks for your beloved Jesus Christ, in whom you have shared the beauty and pain of human life. Look with compassion upon all for whom we name in our hearts before you now. Strengthen them and us to be your instruments of healing in the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel reading comes from John chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. The truth will set you free is another one of those Christian bumper sticker or t-shirt sayings. They sometimes bother me because a lot of what Jesus says, especially in John's Gospel, is completely dependent on when he says it, or where he is when he's saying it, or who he is saying it to, or who happens to be listening in on him saying it. Sometimes it's all of the above. In the case of the truth will set you free, he's not talking to his disciples. John says that he's talking to the Jews who believed in him, and that sounds like it's his disciples, but this is why context is so 
important with John. In the fourth gospel, John's gospel, the Jews, that phrase, the Jews, is code. The Jews doesn't mean all of Israel. It refers to the Jewish religious authority figures, in other words, the Pharisees, the high priests, the chief priests, and any other parties who together comprised what was called the Sanhedrin. Sometimes this group will be referred to as the council in the New Testament. And it is this group, the religious gatekeepers, that is being referred to as the Jews in John's Gospel. We know that there were at least a couple of council members who were disciples of Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea was one, as was Nicodemus. Jesus was speaking to them, to the portion of the council that believed in him, not to his disciples, when he said, If you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. As you might remember from the last episode, disciple just means learner. So if you continue in my word, then you will continue to learn from me, and what you learn from me will make you free, is what Jesus was saying. Of course, this statement is misinterpreted because of the word free. One of the problems with the council is that they are dismissive of Jesus. Whenever they approach him, their stance is more or less hostile. Even those who believe in him were apparently this way. They believed in Jesus, but they were still part of a group that was hostile to him. Let's call them Jesus Curious. They, whether they intend to or not, often seize on a word that Jesus says as they do here with the word free. If Jesus tells us we'll be set free, that must mean he thinks we're slaves. And their response to Jesus reveals that this is exactly what they think. We've never been slaves of anybody. Jesus is trying to encourage them to stay in his word. Maybe we'll talk about what staying in his word means in another episode. But we can summarize it by remembering that the culture of their time was an oral culture and not as much a written one. Jesus, when he mentions his word, is talking about his spoken word, which comes from who he is, his identity. If they continue in listening to not just what Jesus says, but what he does and is, they will learn to be more like him. They will go from Jesus curious to true disciples. We'll have to say more about all this at another time. But let me ask you, how Jesus curious are you? You may be a longtime disciple of Jesus, and that's great. But for anyone listening who maybe wouldn't call themselves a disciple, how Jesus curious are you? Lots and lots of people are hostile and dismissive of Jesus. They look at the Bible and are just waiting for the inevitable verse that offends their sensibilities so they can have an excuse for dismissing Jesus and everything else the Bible talks about. You probably know people like this, I certainly do. It probably doesn't describe you though, because if you were that hostile, I don't think you'd be listening to this. So if you're not in the disciple group and you're not in the dismissive, actively hostile group, then how Jesus curious are you? You may have a fair amount of free time on your hands right now. Perhaps it's time to indulge that curiosity a bit. You can start doing that by being in Jesus' word. There's way more to that than just reading the Bible. But the Bible is definitely Jesus' word. I would suggest reading the Gospel of Mark if you're Jesus curious. You will have questions, or at least I hope you do. I'm more than willing to entertain some of those. You may ask them in the comments of these podcast posts or email them to me at templeumc at comcast.net. We'll talk more about what Jesus means when he says, my word, in a future episode. Maybe not our next episode, but the way things are going, there will be a fair few more. Speaking of the next episode, it will be out in a couple of days. Until then, grace and peace to all.